In 2006, a passionate enthusiast laid claim to Scintilla Maris, a 46-metre beam trawler that had weathered the unforgiving storms and tumultuous waves of the North Sea for more than 80,000 hours. So began the remarkable tale of this enduring vessel. This trawler was launched in 1988 and is a testament to the exceptional craftsmanship of Dutch naval architects and boat builders. Their legacy lives on to this day. Initially crafted as one of eight sister ships, she was built at the Muscant shipyard, which has since become a part of the Darman Group. With a legacy spanning over 79 years, the shipyard is renowned for constructing robust trawlers specifically engineered to withstand some of the harshest maritime conditions. Only about five months away from embarking on her new journey as a long-range trawler yacht, this boat's remarkable transformation is being carried out by some of the very artisans who had a hand in her initial construction back in 1988. Guys, before we take a look aboard this amazing vessel, please don't forget to give the video a like, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. While visiting the yard, I was able to access and explore some of the areas and spaces that my experience tells me you, my viewers, would be most intrigued to see at this stage of the build. However, due to the ongoing work by the skilled craftsmen, certain areas could not be captured on film. But I do plan on coming back to the yard when the boat is finished, so make sure you subscribe because you won't want to miss that video. One of the first areas I'd like to show you is the crew quarters. The crew quarters have been thoughtfully positioned on the vessel's upper deck within the area typically referred to as the Wowback. This dedicated space for the crew ensures comfortable living arrangements and a sense of privacy, which will undoubtedly be appreciated by the future crew members who embark on this remarkable journey aboard the reimagined Exploriot. The crew will be able to use these port and starboard side decks to access the unique staircases that allow the guests and staff to embark and disembark the vessel's tender whilst at anchor. The experienced owners have carefully designed the crew accommodation on the vessel to provide ample natural light and spacious living areas for year-round living aboard the vessel. On this boat the crew can wake up, walk through one door and be out on the upper deck within seconds without having to disturb the owners and their guests. Let me take you to the area located behind the crew quarters, which is a closed off space for food preparation and entertainment purposes. This will be an excellent area for socialising and for entertaining guests. From here you can easily access both the port and starboard staircases that lead down to the water and the winding staircases that lead up to the vast upper foredeck. Let's discuss the remarkable features of the midship section of the upper deck. This particular area boasts 13 windows that have been incorporated into the deck. The owner's full beam cabin situated below will be flooded with natural light owing to the abundance of windows in this section. The hatch that previously provided access to the trawler's fish storage area has been modified with the addition of eight windows. This transformation has turned it into a unique feature that allows natural light to fill the owner's suite, enhancing the overall ambience and aesthetic appeal of the space. The skilled engineers at Darman Maskant have impressively installed 30 skylights into the 46 metre trawler's deck. This is a remarkable engineering accomplishment. Moving aft there is a saloon and library with two doors leading out onto the upper deck.
Now I would like to guide you to the upcoming galley and dining area. On the deck area aft of the galley is a hatch which leads down to the steering gear. On the bulkhead is a watertight door and plenty of windows. This galley will be huge and will incorporate a professional kitchen and a large seating area. These renderings give a glimpse of what is to come. Before we look at the owner's suite and the vast bridge, let's have a closer look at the steps built into the deck. Keep in mind that once the build is complete, the vessel will be sitting lower in the water. When sailing in harsh weather conditions, the staircases can be closed off using the thick doors. However, when the boat is at anchor, everyone on board, including the owners, guests and crew, can conveniently access the tender and the water. The boat offers ample room to comfortably accommodate 10 guests within its current layout. This includes four well-appointed double cabins and an expansive owner's suite, all located on the lower deck. Here is a look inside one of the twin single cabins with its impressive headroom and thanks to the windows, an abundance of natural light. Every cabin comes equipped with a noiseless climate control system. It's so quiet that you won't even realize when it's turning on or running, even if you're asleep. The guest cabins on this boat are remarkably spacious, with the entire vessel having been stripped down and a new deck constructed in the former storage spaces the resulting Explore Yachts will be impressively voluminous. The boat's interior design will be crafted by the renowned Vripak Studio, known for their exceptional creativity, innovation and attention to detail in the world of yacht design. The midship's location of the full beam owner's suite ensures a comfortable journey for the owners, even in rough seas. The shower in the owner's suite will be spacious and equipped with rainhead fittings. In fact, this space is so big you could probably fit about 10 people in here. Before we talk about what will power this formidable boat, let us check out the massive bridge deck and what will be the sun deck. Being on board this vessel was a true privilege as the technicians worked diligently to wire its complex systems. It's easy to overlook just how intricate and complicated the designs on these vessels can be. I can't wait to share with you the completed bridge when I return. It will feature two helm seats situated behind three large multifunction displays. Additionally, a walkway will be located in front of the control station, allowing passengers to get a captain's view of the proceedings. Here you get an idea of the vast amounts of cabling required to fit out a state-of-the-art bridge. The owner also wanted a port and starboard wing station that will give excellent visibility when bringing the vessel alongside. After the bridge will be a social area for sitting down and relaxing with family, friends and colleagues. Stepping through these doors will bring you out onto yet another open deck space that benefits from a shaded area thanks to the overhang from the sun deck. Here you can also gain direct access to the sun deck. As we move forward along the starboard side of the bridge deck, we reach the Portuguese bridge. This was a specific feature that the owner wanted and Darman was more than happy to fulfill their request. Note also the large seating area directly under those forward raking windows. The Portuguese bridge on this boat is so big, it provides yet another fantastic place to sit and enjoy the view as you motor towards your next destination. 
Standing on the Portuguese bridge, you get a breathtaking view of the huge foremast. The owner told me he intends to put some seating up here. You can just imagine the view. What a great place to enjoy sundowners and, if you are brave enough, the force of some big waves. Would you want to perch yourself up here as you beat through some big waves? I know I certainly would, but let me know in the comments below. And remember, I always respond to any comments, questions or queries which are sent with a super thanks. Not only is the tender kept on the sun deck of this adventurous boat, but is also an excellent spot to sit, unwind and take in the breathtaking views. There is a recessed seating area where guests can socialise whilst at the same time seeking refuge from the sun. Moving forward we come to an elevated area that will play host to several sun pads. It's also worth pointing out that the owners intend to charter this amazing vessel and that is one charter I would love to go on. Whilst we are here, let's peer above the hardtop and take a look at the two dry stacks, crow nest and secondary radar mast. In front of the sun pads is a U-shaped seating area where the owners and their guests can enjoy some spectacular views, especially when the vessel is underway. The experienced owners of this boat have utilised the sun deck space extremely well by creating several social areas. These spaces can be enjoyed even if the sun isn't shining. Let's talk more about the vessel's state-of-the-art propulsion system. The owner has chosen an advanced hybrid diesel-electric configuration. This setup comprises a custom-engineered 2000 horsepower electric motor that produces 1300 kW at 1000 rpm and is provided by Morelli in Italy. It has been designed with two windings. These two windings create two separate 650 kW motors wound on one stator, allowing for individual or combined operation to achieve a wide range of motor speeds. The electric motor is connected to a ZF marine reduction gearbox and powered by three Volvo D16 IMO3 gensets, ensuring reliable and efficient power generation. They produce 586 kW at 1800 rpm. The EST Flotec lithium ion battery bank with a substantial 2 MW capacity offers multiple layers of redundancy and functionality. It allows for a full hotel load to run overnight without the need for generators, supports peak shaving during higher power demand and powers the 110 kW Morelli bow and stern thrusters for silent emission-free electronic anchoring. The expert team at Maritime Electro Zealand is responsible for the seamless integration of all electrical installations, including propulsion, power management, automation, navigation, communication, entertainment and lighting systems. The hybrid system built upon an AC and DC backup grid can be monitored and controlled remotely, offering four distinct sailing modes, battery mode with limited power and hybrid mode with one, two or three diesel generators operating at constant loads. Additionally, the Dynapilot system from Alphatron Marine based on dynamic positioning technology, provides full navigation control in all modes through a single joystick. When it comes to her range, because the build is not complete yet, it's hard to say what the exact figures will be, but personally I would be surprised if the figure comes in under 5,000 nautical miles. I would like to express my gratitude to the owners for giving me the chance to create this video and for giving me a tour of their extraordinary boat. It has been an absolute privilege to feature this project. I'd also like to express my gratitude to the wonderful team at Darman Maskant for welcoming me for the day. They are a friendly and supportive group of individuals and if you are considering embarking on your own project, I encourage you to check out their website which I have linked in the video description.
And remember, if you have access to a boat that you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, feel free to contact me. I'll leave my contact details in the video description. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for supporting my YouTube channel. It's thanks to your monthly pledge that I'm able to fund trips like this one. As a channel member, you'll get a special icon next to your name when you comment in the video comments, and you'll also get access to exclusive members-only content. If you're interested in finding out more, then I'll leave a link pinned in the comments below. In the next couple of days, I'll be heading back to Holland to film five boats in one day. If you'd like to stay up to date with what I'm doing, where I'm going and what I'm filming, then be sure to come and find me on Instagram. I'll leave a link to my Instagram account in the video description. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like because it will increase its reach on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've also picked a couple of videos from my library, which I think you'll love, especially if you enjoyed this video. And they're in front of you now. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.